What's up, Kajudo Duel Masters? Poji Force here, bringing you a narrated video duel. This is myself on the left versus Nick Gray on the right at our Kajudo Duel Days at Atlantis Games and Comics on the 11th, Saturday. Nick just rolled, I believe, a four. And I double his roll with an eight. And at this point, I tell him, I doubled your roll, therefore I'll move double your speed and win. A little cocky there. I had played him in a free game before uh, the, the tournament had started, and I had completely dominated him, so I was pretty confident coming into this. This was the second round, by the way. First round was against Candice. I would forgot to record it, and by the time I remembered, the match was already underway, so I just went without that one. Um, I saw, I'm sorry, Candice. I promise I will get a video with you in it soon. At this point, I realize that some of my cards are upside down, so I fix it and reshuffle for him to recut. So we had six people at this event. It was myself, Nick Gray, uh, Nathan Bond, Candace. I'm sorry, Candace, I don't know your last name either. Um, Garrett Ward and Robert Hopkins. Garrett and Robert are two of our newer players. Um, everyone did pretty well today, except for Nathan. I'm sorry, Nathan. I'm telling everybody I'm sorry in this video. I'm sorry, world. I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry. Nick's waiting on me. I'm taking forever to shuffle. And my tiny ass mat. It's a spell grounds, though. Paid $15 for it. I need a full size mat, though. Maybe I'll win something really cool at the KMC I'm going to. That'd be fantastic. So I'm playing Dark Saber Bolt in this tournament. Actually, I played Dark Saber Bolt all weekend. I did pretty good, too. And um, Nick's playing. He referred to it as Birds and Bottles, I believe. It's basically dragons and birds and bottles. So I start with the Bone Blades, he starts with a Terrapid. And then I put down a Skull Shatter. I was running three copies, I wasn't too worried. But I think I had another one in my hand, and that was the problem, was that I was drawing on my Skull Shatters. He's got a bird out already. And I know Nick can go really aggressive with his birds in the early game, so I'm not, I'm not happy about not being able to do anything about it. So I was about to put down another Skull Shatter, thought twice of it, put down an Infernus instead. And I'd play a Gloom Hollow. Because i got to deal with the early aggression. If Nick can get his early aggression on, he'll do it. By God, will he do it. So he drops a Nyx. I'm safer, but I'm not safe. So I reap and sow, trying to get somewhere quickly. I think at this point he may bone blades me. He's at turn four. That's my fear at that moment. See, so he throws an umbra into the mana zone. And he passes, so I'm feeling pretty good at this moment. So I throw a Tornado Flame down, I got 6 mana, and I puppet him. Trying to hold off whatever big threat he's got. He's got a bottle of Pit and Andromeda. Pit and Andromeda are big threats of their own. I'm looking at that bottle bottle and the fact that he can do it next turn, and that he can get all kinds of crazy stuff off it, so I pick the bottle. Andromeda, I can hold off, because I'm setting up to kill some birds. And while Pit can kill something, at least it doesn't give him a big body on the fort, on the field. On, on the field, excuse me. On the board, on the build. So he throws the Terrapit in mana, which makes me feel a little more confident. He's got two Terrapits in mana zone now. I've got six mana. My guy's bigger than his. He doesn't dare swing right now until he can get rid of the puppet or play something bigger. I got seven mana. I bone blades the Lux, because I hate Lux. And I'm still sitting on that Skull Shatter I nearly threw in the mana zone. Uh, Nick's modified his, his bottle deck recently, and he's included some discard. So, at this point, I think he, yeah, he puppets me. Takes care of that skull shatter so I don't get to use it on him. I reap and sow. Got eight mana. At this point, I'm like, you know what, I need to just, just do something. And he storm sparks, and that makes me a little upset. Because that means Gloom Hollow is completely vulnerable. 
and I can't, I couldn't even swing with it if I wanted to. Probably should have swung with it first if I intended to. I don't think I intended to. I think I intended to keep it there in case he decided to go in with Nick's. Nick going in with Nick's. He plays his own Gloom Hollow. Yeah, he kills the, kills my Gloom Hollow. But at this point, I believe I have the other Infernus in my hand. So, I'm going to play mana. I think I was really divided here because, yeah, it was my last Skull Shatter. I'm like, I could shatter him, but I want to go aggressive here. So, I'm going for shields, praying I don't hit a Terra Pit or give him a Death Smoke, because he runs like two Death Smoke, I think. And if he doesn't have the third, I mean, he only runs, I mean, two of the Pits are gone already, but, you know, there's still one left. I was worried I would hit it. But apparently not. So he just plays. A he tries to play a bird. He forgot it was in Furnace the Awakened. So with that, he realizes he can't do anything. So he, I think he just passes and gives it to me. No, he kills the the puppet, which was a good play. Because otherwise, I probably would have swung for game next turn. So I play a Gloom Hollow, and then I triple break, and I banish the Nyx. See, if I gave him the Terra Pit, I did not. So, at this point, I think he just loses, because between Gloom Hollow and Infernus, there's really nothing he can do. He can maybe kill one, but not both. I think he plays Lyra to hold it down. Yeah, there we go. So he holds down Infernus, but that doesn't deal with the Gloom Hollow. So I'm like, Gloom Hollow can swing. Also, Puppet, just to see what he has. All of his big dragons and birds. So I Puppet to take out the Orion. He runs three Orions in his bottle deck. And I think it's a good card there. Because with him running three copies of it, um, it works with Issel, which he runs two copies of in the deck, and it's just a great way to make openings for his dragons. It's like, oh, you got, you, so it's like, say he plays Andromeda, so you don't attack, because you know, you attack, your guys tap down. Well, maybe he doesn't want to wait for you, so he plays Orion and taps down your guys for you, and then kills them with the, and Andromeda. Andromeda does a decent tap down on its own, but it kind of relies on your opponent to do something for the, for the tap down to work. So instead, what he does is plays three Orion, and Orion helps him get out the Lux and the Lyra and the Andromeda. He plays a lot of gamble cards like that, but sometimes it works for him, and then sometimes it doesn't. He didn't get to play Bottle at all that game, because I took it away from him, and then I guess he didn't, never drew another one. That's a good angle. That's a really nice angle. So, at this point, I take a really long time to shuffle. Because um, we were having conversations in the background. Uh, we were talking about... Ro at this point, Robert had just beat... I think... Had just beat Nathan on the table next to us. And we were all talking about it. Because Robert is a newer player. And he doesn't quite have that experience yet. And as a newer player, he also doesn't quite have the collection that me, Nathan, or Nick have. But he had a pretty good... Uh, aggressive deck built and the Herald deck that Nathan built just couldn't keep up with it and Robert was able to take a 2-0 swift match against him it was pretty awesome and Garrett was at the other table playing Candace uh, Garrett was playing Blurple that day and Candace was running Mono Fire which by the way I was actually a bit upset that I had to face her round one because Mono Fire is a kind of a difficult matchup for Dark Saber Bolt because Mono Fire, when played right, moves so much faster and can be so much more aggressive if you get the right cards. But uh, I suppose Dark Saber Bolt is a little bit more consistent and while it was a tough match, I managed to beat her 2-1. So I think we're getting ready here. We're starting up second game. First game was not a good start for me. Didn't even see a single Saber Tooth. So I'm hoping here, game two will be better. He starts off immediately with a Storm Spark Blast. I hate it when I see Nick with light mana because that means potentially a turn two bird. I throw a Gloom Hollow down because I need to unlock that dark mana. 
I was the whole reason I test I was testing this today. And I'm pretty sure the turn two bird is coming. And there it is. Yes. So I draw a razor hide, I throw it in mana, I got nothing else I can do. It's a bit upsetting. So he throws down third mana and drops another Lux. At this point, I know I'm in a bad way. He's got two birds on field. I don't have anything. He breaks a shield. He's got nothing. So at this point, I know I need to get something on board. Or he's going to beat my face in with birds. So I finally decide, decide to throw, uh, I think, yeah, Tetsuri in the Unchained into the mana zone. I play a prickleback, and I'm daring him to attack me again so I can start killing his birds. And then I realize he has two birds and four mana, and there's the Lyra. I was real upset. <laughs> so that prickleback I went to all that trouble to play is now completely useless. Um... He's got three dudes on play in play. I got one dude who can't do anything. Uh, so I have a Gloom Hollow, and that's all I can do. At this point, I'm pretty dead on board. I'm not going to be able to. I think I'm trying to hold off to that barrage in my hand, but I don't think I'm ever going to get there. So he bottles. I'm just praying he doesn't get a removal. Really, at this point, what I want him to get is a the best possible card for me. For him to get would be a logo scan. For him, it's Orion, uh, Storm Spark Blast, or any kill spell, really. But he gets an Umbra instead, which isn't great, but isn't terrible. And he swings on the prickle back instead of going for shields. And at this point, I'm having to decide... Whether I'm going to let that go or not. Because on the one hand, Prickleback can kill the Luxus. On the other hand, if I don't block it, you can only take one shield this turn. So I think long and hard about this one. Think long and hard. Nick gets a little impatient. He's like, I targeted the Prickleback. I'm like, I, I'm thinking. So I let the Prickleback go. I block one Lux, he attacks with the other, hits a Root Trap, managed to deal with the uh, the Double Breaker, but now I still have a whole bunch of birds to deal with. I reap and sow, hoping I can get something usable. I get another prickle back. And I'm like, basically, that has to be a kill spell, or I lose, and then he tops into... A kill spell and deals with my Gloom Hollow. So now it has to be Barrage or I lose. And I don't know what Nick's waiting for. I don't have the, the host audio here, so I have no actual no idea what's going on. But he breaks his shield. It is a blast, but... It's not a good one, so he he gets second game with the Lux. Just couldn't keep up. He had the perfect progression there. Lux, Lux, Lyra. At turn four, Lyra was what messed me up more than anything. And I just couldn't respond to it. I didn't see any of my uh, Sabertooths. I, didn't, I wasn't able to get to the Barrage quickly enough. So that's an instance where Bottles and Birds can actually be faster than Dark Saber Bolt. The problem with Dark Saber Bolt is that while it's a particularly aggressive and semi-consistent deck, its lack of consistency comes from when you don't get that turn 4 Sabertooth. It only runs 6 bait be simply because the bait... You don't want to overpower the deck with bait because while Sab Sabertooth is really powerful, he's a means to an end. He's there to help you get some early shield breaking in. Throw something out there that's big early on that your opponent has to deal with. And then set you up for um, Skull Shatters and Bull Tails later on. 
or Infernus, the the uh, the Awakened. I keep wanting to call them Infernus the Emulator because that's such a cooler name, and it's a much cooler looking card too. But they're both really good cards. We're going into game three here. Starting with the Prickleback, the Prickle Ickle Wickle back. And he starts with the Draco Thane in mana. So I'm going for some early aggression here. And I hit a turn one bottle. That's upsetting. Light and visions flashing through my eyes at the one time I did that to him. And he dropped an Andromeda turn one. And I'm like, just no. And I scoot. So this is a different story here. Let's see what he gets. He gets a Lux. Which isn't the worst thing, but I'm not happy about him having a turn two bird again. And this one can attack, so actually it's basically a turn one bird. Not happy about it, but... So he goes in with the bird. Me wishing he hit a Bone Blades or something that I could use to immediately kill it, but he doesn't. So I play the Razor Hide. He actually does not have any light mana now, so that's, he's actually kind of lucky that Lux got out there. I think he plays a Gloom Hollow at three mana. No, he plays a Nyx, so he has to. He's deciding whether or not he wants to go in, and he decides not to because he doesn't want to give Razor High to target. Yes. No, I'm th fearing a turn four Lyra at this point again. But then again, he has no light mana. So, I'm going to just reap and sow. Try to get to something usable here. I'm going to go ahead and go in with the... Uh, just unlucky bottle and then a terra pit. Bottle and then pit. Nick's shields this last game are just too good. And you'll see why in a few minutes here. Feels good to me. Yeah, but you could use one more. He plays a Gloom Hollow. He swings in with the Lux and the Nyx. Things are looking pretty nasty. I've got six mana, so I play a Prickleback, another Prickleback. And a saber tooth. I start swinging at creatures, and he starts letting them go because he has no point there. And I'm like, well, let's see what he'll let the saber tooth do. And I think I swing at the nyx, and he decides to block, which was a smart choice. And I think at this point he bottles again. He finally has the, some light mana. He's at five mana, and yeah, he plays the 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 second bottle. And he gets another Gloom Hollow. So Nyx pushing the early aggression here. He's going in with the Nyx. He's not hitting any of my blasts. And Nyx trying to decide if he wants to attack with the next one. He decides he does. Still no blasts. I'm in a bad way. I have nothing that can kill the other the other Gloom Hollow. So I realize at this point I have to go in, and I Death Smoke, and I double break. Storm Spark Blast and Terra Pit. At this point, I'm just like I'm done. You win. Nick wins the game 2-0. He had four blasts down. Everybody, in order: Bottle, Pit, Pit. Storm Spark Blast. Too good. Can't deal with it. So that's the match, guys. Like, favorite, subscribe, and we will see you later.